Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Coffee with King David, and here we have another episode. Today we have Keely Elise with us, my one and only daughter. And <laughs> so, yeah, and uh, so we're going to talk about some things with Keely and some things about her life and let her give you some ideas of what it's like uh, in her life. So let's talk music first of all, Keely. What are your plans and your music career? And can we expect new music? For some of you, those of you that don't know, Keely's a musician. She has a whole lot of songs out there on all the different music platforms. Oh, thank she's, you for the plug. <laughs> she's, she's very talented. She plays piano, she plays guitar, she plays uh, ukulele. What else do you play? Um, I tried my hand at banjo once. I wasn't very yeah, good at that. <laughs> she tried banjo for a little while. And uh, anyway, so what is your plans for your future music career? Um, well, right now I have been working on my first full-length album. I say I say first album because I did release a what I called an album. It was kind of more like an EP in 2021. Um, it was eight songs, so it's kind of on the shorter end, so it's technically an album, but not quite. So I am working on right now what I would call my first full-length album. It's going to be about 15 songs. So your first full-length album. Yes. Wow. So I've been working on this since really, really the songs I started writing almost four years ago. So this has been about four years in the making, um, been working on the production of it. We started about the end of 2021 working on the production. Um, we're getting close. We have a little bit more tidying up to do over the next few months, but I'm hoping, fingers crossed, to release something in the summer of next year um, and have it all ready to go by then. So hopefully I'll have some new songs and new singles and music videos before then. So you've been writing the songs for about four years and you've been working on the production of the album for two years. Mm -hmm. It's yes. a lot of work, isn't it? It's, it's definitely a lot of work, especially yeah. if you don't have an entire team behind you and it's yeah. just me and my producer and we just sit in his bedroom and you know making beats and tracks all the time. And um, we've actually, because it's been such a long process, you've, you grow so much as an artist um, year after year. And so a lot of the songs that we recorded almost two years ago, we've redone about three or four times now because we did them in 2021 and loved them, but now we're here, 2023, and I feel like my sound is different, my feel is different, I write better as an artist. So I've actually gone back and changed the lyrics of things. I've gone back and we re-recorded vocals because my vocals are better now. We've had to redo the drums and the bass and the guitar because it just didn't feel my sound anymore because I've shifted so much as an artist in two years. So. Um, it's kind of been a fun process of going back and being like, okay, this was great at the time, but now I know we can do this better and I want to put out a product that I know is my best. Are you like a lot of artists that, that their, their latest song is their favorite one? <laughs> is that right? And, and that's the one you want to sing to people? I think that's definitely the ones you want to sing is the, the new ones you write, but I think my favorite songs to sing are ones that people connect with the most. Yeah. Um, ones that I know that people feel deeply within their soul and so um, I know that a lot of people, even though it's not my favorite, who <laughs> love Light It Up, which was my first single ever when I was 17. So even though it's not my favorite to sing, I know that kids love that. I, I love to sing Brown Eyes because that was that's probably my biggest hit and everybody knows that every time I sing that at a show or something. I, um, seeing people's eyes light up is really, really fun. Um, so I think my favorites to play are ones that make the audience and my, my fans really excited. And Brown Eyes, you just have <clears throat> the best music video for that. <laughs> I mean, meeting Scott is... is it, but that's not how you really met Scott. How'd you really meet Scott? Well, um, that wasn't about meeting Scott. It was actually, it, the music video was very uh, real to a moment that I had with Scott. Um, we actually met through Preston, my brother. He had a company called Fire Merch, and um, Scott was looking for some work, um, and I had just dropped out of college because I didn't know what I want to do with my life. <laughs> Fire Merch. Oh, Fire Merch. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got some right there. <laughs> Um, so I dropped out of college and I was like, I'm going to just focus on music and YouTube and see where this goes. And I was feeling a little lost, so I worked at Fire Merch um, temporarily just to make some cash. And Scott had just started there because he had just started college and was looking for something too. And that's where we met and we started falling in love. And the very first day that I walked in, my friend Haley worked there. And she texted me when he walked in and said, uh, your future husband just started working here. So that was a little bit of prophecy. <laughs> <laughs> a little prophecy, um, yeah. I didn't even meet him for two months later after that. Yeah. So, uh, well, but I heard when he first saw you, he was like, hold up. Well, like, he saw... He got excited. 
talking about my music, yeah, he said, saw. I, I like that. He, he wanted to. Know, he wanted to meet you. That's yeah, well, all I can say. Um, with the manager at the time working there, uh, she saw like she had my CD, like my very first CD, lighted up, and she gave it to Scott. And she was trying to play matchmaker, and she's like, "This is the owner's daughter." And he said, when he saw my picture on the CD, like he was like, "Oh my gosh, I have to meet her." And he said he would play that CD for two months before I even met him. He would play that CD on loop at night. <laughs> <laughs> and so he has that CD still to this day, and that's just kind of like a little keepsake. But the music video for Brown Eyes um, was actually whenever early on in our dating, we were at a coffee shop together, and the sun had come through the window and hit his brown eyes and I was like oh my gosh those are the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen and I had just never until that moment realized like how beautiful brown eyes are and they're kind of this like thing where nobody thinks about them because they're just they're just kind of brown they're not really right. sparkling until the light hits it and so that's what inspired brown eyes is I saw the way that the light hits God's eyes and it inspired this whole song and so the music video is us in a coffee shop and me seeing him and having that experience <laughs> wow Okay, so uh, you're not just a singer, songwriter, you're also a YouTuber. So tell us a little bit about YouTube and what that's like. How did you get started in YouTube? And well, I've always been a consumer of YouTube. Um, I watched YouTubers and vloggers and all of the things back in the day in 2012, 13, when it was really popular to just film your everyday life and just post it to the internet with like no editing and <laughs> just mm -hmm. was kind of the start of YouTubers um, other than gaming which was kind of a big section at the time um, and it was very up and coming gaming so Preston started and he kind of inspired me and I saw oh my older brother's doing this like I think I could do it too and so I stole his Premiere Pro his editing account I, I hacked into it. <laughs> I really? figured out his password. He doesn't know this. <laughs> really? I wow. figured out his password. The whole world knows, but Preston doesn't know. <laughs> I bet. You'll find out I now. figured out his password to his editing software, and I taught myself on, on YouTube how to edit. And so when I was 14, I started making my own like vlogs and challenges and question videos, and, and I would edit them, and they were, they were pretty terrible when I started. But over the years, I got better, and all through high school, I did that just for fun for me, and I feel like I created a very small, tight-knit audience um, there, and that was really fun. It wasn't huge success or viral videos, but I definitely had dedicated viewers, and if you're an old Keeley viewer, thank you so much for still being here um, because I've gone through lots of shifts and changes with YouTube and so I did that and then I went to college and took a break for a while and then I came back and I did gaming um, and that really, I'm not proud of saying but I'll be open and honest, it was really just to make some money at the time because I was a broke college kid and gaming was the most pop, like, popular way to gain traction and revenue really quickly. So I did that in order to make money so I could start making music. So I took the money from my gaming channel in order to make music and then once I gained enough traction from the gaming channel, I then took that and started what my real passion is, which is real life content. And so in 2021, I started my real life channel, it's just called Keely now. And I basically started over with a brand new audience um, and it was just me and a handheld camera and I would pull any of my friends into it that I could. But two years later, I have a team of seven people and the videos are doing awesome and it's the coolest job in the entire world to just get to make videos with my family and my friends and get to just inspire kids every day. What I like to say my channel is, is just a place of joy um, that if any kid is going through anything in life that they can just click on my videos and find happiness and find joy and laugh. And I think that's really needed in this dark world. And uh, you brought Daisy and Poppy into it. Yeah. <laughs> How'd that happen? Um, well, I've always loved dogs. And when Scott and I got married, he had a rule set that we had to wait six months to get a dog. So six months on the dot, we got Daisy. And um, Daisy did so well on the channel. Dogs ended up just becoming such a popular platform within my channel that everybody who watches our audience, they love Daisy. She's a character in the videos. and. Um, I love animals, it's one of my biggest passions, and so I've loved working with Daisy, and through that we've got to do so many amazing experiences. We've got to work with Saving Hope Rescue, we've got to work with Operation Kindness, and a lot of other dog um, rescues and animal rescues, and just had have had them in the videos, because Daisy and it just fits. And Daisy was just our golden child, so she made us want to get a second, which is Poppy, and now she's our little rascal. <laughs> uh -huh. But they're such a fun, like, bunch and like duo they just are so hilarious together 
and they make really good content and now they have their own channel the Daisy Poppy channel so. and, and you were late to this shoot today tell me why because <laughs> Daisy decided to play around in the mud and I had to give her a bath before it, it came it here it rained a lot the last few days here in Dallas and uh, Keely, Keely when she got here was like I had to help Daisy get out of the mud and get in the house right when I was ready to walk out the door so, yes yeah, so. but it's kind of like being a parent but yeah. just for dogs <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but fun so back to when you started YouTube mm -hmm. when in the beginning you said you were you were 14 you had some ideas and you said it was just pretty much content I remember even before that there was a video that you made with your brothers Caleb and Josh uh -huh. and it was called something about finding the diamonds. Oh, I know exactly Remember? what you're talking about. Yes, so for those who are my age or older would know, um, iMovie. <laughs> it was iMovie, a very popular yeah. app in the early 2000s. I don't think much younger generation would understand it, but um, it's, it was an app that came out where you can make your own videos. Yeah, you yeah. can make your own videos and stuff. And so I remember, yeah, like, you're right, actually, even before YouTube, I've always been interested in cameras and yeah. being on screen and acting and just having fun with film. And so I would make videos with Josh and Caleb on iMovie when I was like seven, eight years old. There's yeah. so many of them. And then there's even some when I was like 10, 11, 12. I would make uh, music videos in my bedroom to One Direction songs at like t age 11. Um, I have always just loved being on camera and I've always loved the creative process, like the whole thing. I've loved figuring out angles and taking a creative direction and being on the camera and then the post-production process and how to make it something that people want to watch and that's fun and entertaining. Um, I think it's really fun to take a project from beginning to end and get to see it fully fleshed out. Um, I think that's really cool because video is a way that you get to see that. You know, you get to see the process of very beginning all the way to the end and the final product is really rewarding. Wow. Okay, so you said you went to college. Let's, let's tra transition over here. You went to college. Yeah. You're going to college. You're studying music. You're studying, you're, you're serious at, at B, uh, B, B, DBU. So let's, let's back that up. You don't even remember you, the college I yeah, went to? Yeah, I do now. You, went you to, dropped a lot of money on it, so yeah, I hope you remember know, it. <laughs> so, but you went to DBU, and yes. you're at DBU, and you're studying music. Mm -hmm. And uh, how did you make the decision to transition? I'm, I'm in college full time, and I'm gonna, I'm going back to YouTube. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go do this because uh, that's a big decision for a lot of people, mm -hmm. it, it, and a lot of people are just you know a little bit younger than you that are going. Should I go to college? Should I chase my YouTube yeah. dream? What should I do? Um, so I would say. Prior to going to DBU, the channel that I did have that was, you know, my tight-knit community, I wasn't making a lot of money. I was making maybe two, three hundred dollars a month off of it, which was enough for a high school student. Um, but I wasn't making any kind of living. And I didn't feel at the time capable or confident enough to create something big out of it. I didn't feel confident. I mean, I had been doing it for almost four years and I hadn't seen viral success or enough money to live. So I was like, okay. My next choice is music, and I don't know anybody in the music industry. I need to make connections. I need to learn more about the music business industry if that's what I want to go in and be a musician one day. So let me go to college for it. Um, and so I did. I went to DBU, and I, I had a great time there. My my I had a great time at the year that I was there, um, and I learned a lot about music. But ultimately, I wasn't learning what I wanted. I wasn't learning. Um, how to be in the studio or how to record and I wasn't meeting people that I felt like were amazing connections. I was meeting musicians which is a great connection to have because now for the rest of my life I've got musician friends but I was wanting to meet people in the industry and I just I wasn't meeting that there and as well as a lot of the things that you had to learn especially in your first two years is just theory. So it was awesome for my songwriting to get to learn new chords and new structures but it wasn't ultimately my goal was just to sit and learn theory all day and um, so I made a decision that okay I'm gonna try YouTube um, during the summer after DBU and I had actually finished out my year planning to go back for a second year and I started YouTube that summer um, and then I made the decision that I was going to put as much time as I could into YouTube to see if I could actually give it a true shot um, so I decided to transfer to Berklee School of Music Online, which gave me a lot more time to focus on 
YouTube. Um, and because I was spending about 22 credit hours a week at DBU. And so I took a very, very, very light load online at Berkeley. And so for two semesters, I did that online, which gave me a lot more time for YouTube. And I would just do my school in the evenings and then focus on YouTube during the day. And seeing that success, putting the effort into it that I could, I started seeing success with it. And I started going, wow, I can make a living off of this. And oh, I can also afford to uh, make music with this. And then I was in the studio and I was learning far more in the studio making music than I was online, um, paying thousands of dollars for college. So I just made the decision that what I was doing in my everyday life, I was actually learning more um, than being in school. And I think that's a choice that you have to come to make if you're going to any kind of career path is what you're learning in college, is it going to be necessary for what you're gonna do in the future? And are you learning more in school than if you are just in your everyday life? So for me, I was learning way more being in the studio and um, making YouTube videos than I was in school. So it didn't make sense to pay for the schooling when I was learning more outside of that. But somebody who's going to be a doctor or a nurse or all of these other things, they're going to learn a lot more in school than hands-on experience, obviously. Um, that comes later in life for them. So um, I decided, you know, I'm going to put my all into it. And I think that's what I would recommend to anybody is if you're going to try YouTube or social media or anything, truly give it a chance to give it your 100% all. Don't be flip-flop. Like, don't be half in, half out because it won't work and then you're going to feel like you failed and if you fail that's okay because that means that you have something else you can go towards in life now failure doesn't mean you're a failure it just means that that area was not successful for you but you have another area of success and so once i put my all into it i saw results and i knew that that was the path i was supposed to take and i it was very scary leaving college um I remember sitting with you and mom and mom was not so happy about it, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I just knew deep down the calling that God had given me and what I could do when I put my mind to something and I, I wanted to give it my all. Um, so. And you didn't just jump out of college into it, you jumped, I did like you slow, said, you jumped out of college, slowly, you, still, yeah. you got into Berkeley, you, you stayed, you did part time college and still did that and then kind of started YouTube. And really, we, I thought you were just going to college. You were staying in college online at Berkeley. I didn't realize you were going to build this huge YouTube business. Yeah, I, I mean, I didn't go into it thinking I'm building a business. I just went into it thinking, like, I'm going to give my all to this channel and see if the videos do good. And then they did. And then once you create revenue, you need, you know, sources for it. And then once you are at your capacity, you need to hire people. So it just kind of happened. It was kind of like okay, here we go, I'm making YouTube videos. I wasn't going like, okay, I'm gonna make YouTube videos and make a business. I just knew that I was good at YouTube and I could do it if I actually gave it my all. And um, once I you know, gave it my all and I was really just pushing towards it, then I saw the success and I was like, okay, I don't need school as a backup. This is what I'm gonna do. And if this fails, if YouTube fails, I'll go back to school. I have two years of it already, mm -hmm. you know? And so I can go back to school at any time in life, but I right now didn't have the, Right now I had traction on YouTube, that's not going to happen any time in life, you know? So you said IRL was your passion in real life videos. Mm -hmm. How did you come about that being your passion? Um, I think it goes back to what we were talking about um, when I was a kid, like being on camera and acting and um, creating videos start to finish and seeing the production. Um, I, like I said, I was doing gaming really just to start something to build some kind of... What kind of gaming? I was doing Roblox. Roblox. Um, that was the highest RPM, which is um, revenue on YouTube at the time, was female Roblox gamers. <laughs> so I was wow. like, I'm going to do what makes the most money to get started to do my passion. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you kind of have to do that in life. You kind of just have to do something that you don't really want to do in order to sacrifice and, you know, know the long-term goal. Um, I think about that like when I encourage my friends or my family who are like, you know, they're like in a job they may not love right now, but they're like, well, I'm working towards paying off my debt. I'm like, okay, well, finish that out. And you know, and then that opens opportunities for you in the future or things like that. So for me, I was, I was working towards something I didn't really 100% love. I didn't love gaming. Mm -hmm. um, but as a kid, I did acting classes and I sang and I was always on stage. And for me, YouTube kind of feels like that. Um, it's just in front of a camera instead of in front of an audience, but the audience is just behind the camera. And it's a lot more than a thousand people in an auditorium. It's millions of people behind the screen. <laughs> Where did you sing when you were young? 
Um, I was in Texas Girls Choir for about six years and I learned a lot through that. Um, I would sing with you at different churches. Would you, would you recommend young girls watching this, that if, if they live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, to maybe get in Texas Girls Choir for a little while, a part of their life? If they, if they love to sing, yeah. yeah. It was a great experience for me and got to learn a lot. It was great, wasn't it? Was it was really fun. Um, so. The only thing that was tough for me is I was homeschooled, so I never experienced, like, I always had guy friends because I had brothers and I was homeschooled, so all my friends were guys. I never experienced like girl drama. <laughs> and so being in choir for the first time, I experienced like yeah, girl clicks drama. and girl drama. And you know, so there was a lot of tear shed, but if you're already in public school, you're fine. It's yeah. just, I was just a little sheltered homeschool yeah. girl who didn't know how to yeah. handle that. <laughs> yeah, you've got the shell if you're in public school, so <laughs> you're covered. Let's talk about, all right, let's talk about Scott and you met Scott and y'all fell in love and you got married. What's it like to be a young married couple in today's world? Um, I think one thing is a lot of people don't get it or understand it. They're like, why are you married so young? And not only that, I also look very young. So people also think I'm younger mm -hmm. than I am. I'm almost mm -hmm. 24, but the other day somebody saw me and I was talking about being married. And she goes, how old are you? And I was like, I'm 23. She's like, I thought you were 16. I was confused why you're married. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, I'm not 16, but um, I actually didn't want to get married till I was 30 or older. Like, I always grew up thinking that I would start a career, I would have a music career, I would be on tour, and I was like, eh, I just don't see a husband fitting into all of that. And so I had always just, even when I was at college and all these, like, at DBU, ring my fling is a very big thing. Like every girl's trying to get wifed up. <laughs> and I was like, just don't talk to me because I'm not even going there. Because I was truly thinking, I was like, I'm gonna go on tour, I'm gonna make music, I'm gonna have a career. I don't want a husband having to deal with all of that. So I was like, I'm fine until I'm like 30, 35, like way later in life getting married, which, so that was my plan. And so when I met Scott, I was really, really hesitant and I made him wait a long time to make sure that I really, really wanted to be with him because I just never wanted to date somebody unless I knew it was gonna end up serious and potentially in marriage. Um, so Scott was my first ever boyfriend. I had never dated anybody prior to that, never even been on a date, never even held hands with somebody because I was just truly like, why waste my time knowing that I'm not going to get married till later in life. So um, whenever Scott and I met, and he really liked me, but I was kind of liking him, but I was just like still very unsure and I still kind of had, and what I would say, not really God's plan for my life in the back of my mind, it was my plan. Um, so that was really pushing me away from him for a long time. It took him about six to eight months to really break me down and decide to date him. But um, it really was through that six months of Scott being extremely patient, which made me like him even more because he wasn't pressuring me or, or pushing me. He was just waiting for me. And at the same time, the Lord was speaking to me like, this is okay, you're safe here. Like, this is who I have for you. And I just listened to the Lord in it all. And, and then we started dating and well then once we started dating, I was like, okay, well I don't want to get married until, I was still in school at the time. I was like, I don't want to get married until I'm out of school. He was still in school. I was like, probably like four years, four or five years, probably not to 24, 25. And then about six months later, the Lord gave me a vision of us getting married in October of 2021. And I saw the date, October 21, 2021. And I was like, really scared and I didn't want to tell him because I was like, we just talked about waiting a few years, like that's next year. And I ended up telling him and he prayed about it. And a few months later, he got some confirmation about it as well. And we were like, okay, well, no matter what we want or our dreams or our desires, we know what God wants and has planned for us is best. And so we listened to him and a year later we got married on that date. And it was such an amazing experience through it all because God gave me that desire of my heart to be married to him more and more the closer we got to it, even though that wasn't my desire at the beginning of our relationship. He really gave that because he knew that was his plan. And God knows what he's doing all along because I always thought, oh, I need to plan my whole life and have it all ready to go before I bring a husband into it. And God was like, you're not going to be able to do that without a husband and without Scott in your life. And after he got married, Scott ended up joining my channel on my team and now he's my producer and I cannot even imagine the Keeley team and channel without him. He is literally the rock of our team and everybody on it. And so I would not have been able to grow my business like I have in the last years without him. Like it is our business now. He helps run it all, takes care of it, 
I now get to just step back and just be the pretty face <laughs> and be the yeah. creative behind it now. Um, where I was having to run all the business stuff before, he's taken a lot of that off my plate, which is huge and helpful. And and he's so supportive in my music, and and he has such dreams and aspirations of being an actor, and, and I'm so supportive and all that. And I think that we're gonna now help push each other to our dreams rather than trying to achieve them without each other. Hmm. And so when people go, well, why are you married so young? It's because. Well, God told me to, one, but two, I wouldn't be able to be doing what I'm doing in life without Him. Hmm. So your faith is overwhelmingly the force that drove you in that direction, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's, it is that same faith in God and strength, the, the power that gives you what you need to do to get through every day and... and, and Work and YouTube and oh, one hundred percent. I um, I <clears throat> excuse me. I don't do anything in life without God telling me to do it first and and pushing me to it and and I think God knew what He was doing when He told me to marry Scott and God knew what He was doing when He told me, hey, leave school. It's gonna be okay. Even though I didn't know what the plan looked like, I just knew that I could trust Him. Um, and so I just try to have that faith every single day and just trusting Him of. Okay, God, what are we doing today? What's the decisions we're making today? God, what are the videos we're going to film this week? Okay, Lord, what's the vision for the next few months? Okay, God, can you provide um, some creative, awesome viral videos this month? And I think that's what really has just been the driving factor in it all. Like, I can say, oh, it's my creative ideas that are awesome. Or, oh, it's Scott's business hand that's awesome. But no, it's, it's God's hand in it all that makes it, you know, all happen. It's not me. And so... I think if you're a believer out there and you have faith in the Lord, you can trust Him even if you don't know what the plan looks like. But if He tells you something, trust Him because His plan is going to be much better than yours. And I was telling this to somebody yesterday that God is such a good God that He gave us free will. And sometimes we have like a fork in the road and we can take this path or this path or this path or whatever. And God is so good that He will let us take any one of those paths and He's going to bless it because He gives us free will. But sometimes there is a path that is the best choice for us. And if we give it to God and He will show us the best choice, that path is going to be so much more blessed and so much more fruitful and so much more joyful. Where any one of the other paths could be full of joy and could be amazing. But sometimes there's God's best for us and we have to just lean into Him and listen. And I think when I was making the choice to either marry Scott Young or to continue to wait, I think God would have blessed me and life would still be amazing if I had made the other choice to wait four or five years to get married. But God's best choice was to trust Him and do that. And I did, and now I see why. Because I would not have been able to have all the success that I've had in the last few years without that choice made. And I've been fortunate enough to be in a couple of videos with you. And the way, the way you and Scott work together, it's, it's, it's almost... It's just my, it's almost magical to watch because you all work <laughs> together so well. And Scott's, he's like super good director. I mean, he's, uh -huh. just, he's just brilliant at directing. He's so great. And and uh, and then you you have the greatest ideas that they add on top. It's just it's really a beautiful thing to see, and I love that. And speaking of God's blessing, you've been married two years. You just had your second anniversary, and God blessed you with a trip for your anniversary. Where'd you go? We went to France. It was really fun. Just came back from France and yeah. Paris. Went to four cities. It was four, really funny. Yeah, so that was I fun. had a dream about it last night that we went back. So I guess I have to get on a plane tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, that's quick. Well, maybe next time Mom and I get to go. I really hope so. I yeah. tried to convince them both to come, but yeah. it wasn't able to work out. It but. didn't work out. So, Keely, you've established how you came about, where you are now. and So what is the next four or five years look like for you uh, as far as YouTube, music, uh, children? You want grandkids? Yeah. Is that what you're asking in this question? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I would say in the next four to five years, I would say that um, I will probably continue to grow the channel and then probably we'll have some kids, maybe one or two grandkids for you so you can stop begging me. I think that my channel will probably transition to like a family channel once we do have kids. And then I think Scott will start his own channel and do kind of like big video things. Um, really? Yeah, I think I think that's the plan. Is I I would like to take a step back from YouTube once I do have kids okay. and kind of just have fun family content and then let Scott be. The I can big I can see idea. him 
directing, video, doing all yeah. kinds of stuff. Yeah. So I think that that's what we'd like to do. And then ideally, I. I would love to, you know, keep releasing music and keep doing shows, and I really want to do a tour in the next two years. Um, so hopefully a tour at some point. And um, if any casting directors are happening to watch this, um, hire my husband so he can be in a movie. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, I would think that that's kind of the plan. I don't know. We'll have to see what God has. All right. Well, well let's see what God has for you and your future and what a great life you've built already. Keely, thank you for coming on. It's been great talking with you this morning. Really, really joyful and, and enjoyable. Thank you, Dad. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Everybody, make sure you subscribe to this channel.